I'm Scott. In this video, I'll give a brief tutorial on how to set Wi-Fi up on your Retro Pi. I'll discuss what the term Wi-Fi means and how Wi-Fi works. I'll show you the simple process to enable Wi-Fi on a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus that is running Retro Pi. Wi-Fi can be configured using the Re Retro Pi GUI, but when things don't work as expected, we'll need to go to the line command and do some work on the actual configuration files. I'll go over some of the items that can go wrong with setting up Wi-Fi within RetroPi and how to fix it. Let's get started. Wi-Fi works when a device such as a cell phone, a laptop, or Raspberry Pi contains a Wi-Fi adapter that translates data into a radio signal. Each device contains an antenna. That antenna transmits the radio signal to a wireless router. The wireless router then receives the signal and decodes it. The wireless router then routes the data to the desired device on the local area network. This device is identified by its IP address. Wi-Fi is a trademark term meaning IEEE 802.11.x. It's a set of protocols on how to communicate between devices with radio frequencies. Wi-Fi is based on a local area network. It is not based on the internet. The local area network, or LAN, is also referred to as WLAN, or Wireless Local Area Network. The internet is a global system of interconnected computers that use the internet protocol, TCP slash IP, to link those world worldwide devices. And that brings us to, what does Wi-Fi stand for? In the vernacular, Wi-Fi stands for Wireless Fidelity. At this point, we've got our Raspberry Pi and we're setting in a track mode. So this is a track mode. This is the preview. And here's the main menu and we're looking at the arcade option. So I'm going to scroll around until I find the Retro Pi. I'm using my button, my uh, controller here, Super Nintendo I mean, SNES controller. And I'm pressing the A button. So now I'm in the RetroPi menu. Um, using the D-pad, I'm scrolling around and I'm looking at these options through here. And there's Raspi config. We'll come back to that. <clears throat> there's show IP. We'll come back to that. And there's Wi-Fi. We'll come back to that in a second. So when we're uh, set up to, we have our Wi-Fi working and our Raspberry Pi is connected to our Wi-Fi, you can do the show IP. So I press the A button, and it's gonna execute this command, and it's gonna come back basically and say, I don't have an IP address. Right now, things are starting to get harder. It looks easy. All I gotta do is come over here and press, select Wi-Fi, press my A button, and what happens here? It says you currently don't have your Wi-Fi country set in the supplicant.clnf file. Uh, do you want me to launch the Raspi config for you now? And we're going to say yes. So this is bringing up Raspi config. So, and I'm gonna I'm gonna exit out of this for now, but I just want to show you. If you're in um, a track mode, you may think it's easy because you have these menus on your RetroPi, but you have to set some other stuff up. So we're going to go set that stuff up first. Now there's three different places you can set things up. You can set it up in a track mode because that would have taken us to Raspi config, or you could go to emulation station and it's got an option for Raspi config, or you can go to the command line and issue Raspi config on the command line and it'll bring up the same uh, program. So I'm going to go in it from a track mode right now. So I've highlighted it and I'm just pressing A. And this was the screen that we were previously at. Now 
In this screen, we're in Raspberry Config, and it states it right here. And the header says Raspberry Pi Software Configuration Tool, Raspberry Config. So there's uh, nine options on this menu, and I'm just using my controller, my Super Nintendo Entertainment System knockoff controller, and I'm going through the menu options. And we're going to look at the network options. Option number two. So I highlight that red, and then I press the D-pad to the right to come down to select, and then I'm going to press, and you'll notice that select is highlighted. Now I'm going to press the B button, and it's going to take us into a sub-menu, and it has three options. Uh, the first one is in one for host name, and it says set the visible name for the Pi, and we want to look at that, so I'm, I press uh, on my D-pad right, highlight the select, press the B button, and it says, please note RC's man data host name, blah, 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 letters, numbers, you can read all that. Okay, is select, I press B, and it says, here's your host name, and it defaults to RetroPi. This could be anything. This could be Scott's RetroPi. This could be RetroPi 2. Or if you're gonna put this in an arcade one-up cabinet, say I was gonna put this in my Rampage cabinet, I could call this Rampage, because I could have another rep retro pi and maybe place it in my Space Invaders cabinet, and I could call that Space Invaders. That way, when I'm on the network, I, I would know which retro pi was which. But if I named them both retro pi, then I would have some issues in identifying which retro pi I was actually working on. So for now, I'm gonna leave this to the default. If you wanna change this, you'll have to have your keyboard set up. So we're just gonna leave this to the default retro pi. And I go to the right, uh, come down, I'm sorry, I went down, highlight the OK, and select the B button. So we, know, we now know what our host name is. It's RetroPi. All right, we're in the uh, Raspberry Config, the main menu. And now we're going to go set our localization or our country. So in order to do that, I'm going to select option number four. So I highlight that uh, with my uh, keypad going down. Then I go right on my keypad to highlight the select. And I select B. And we have some options here. The locale, the language and settings, the time zone, keyboard layout, change Wi-Fi country. So I highlight that and I go right on my D-pad so that select is, is highlighted. And I click on the B button. It says select the country in which the Pi is to be used. Uh, now, instead of going one, two, like this all the way down, it's US, by the way. I'm just gonna use my keyboard down key and I'm gonna hold it and it'll scroll through these fairly fast. But we're gonna pick the United States and it's US, so it's at the bottom. Right there. So I highlight that, I hit my right button on my D pad and then I press the B button. So Wi Fi country is set to US. Press the B button, it's okay. So there, now we've set, uh, for localization, we've set a Wi-Fi country. We're at our main screen in the Raspberry Config software. And now we're gonna go provide the SSID um, for our wireless network or Wi-Fi and a password if we have one. So I go to option two, network options. B, or right. then I go uh, right click, highlight select, then B, then I'm going to go to option number N2, which is enter SSID and passphrase. And I highlight uh, right on my D-pad to highlight select, and then button B. And through the keyboard, I'm going to enter my SID. And then I'm gonna go uh, down, highlight OK, hit B. Please enter the passphrase, and that's my password. Now I'm back at the menu. We are finished, so we just right click over to the finish, and we choose B, and it's going to ask us if we want to reboot now. We say yes. And so the reboot is going to implement those changes. All 
and we're back at our main menu in a track mode. So we're just going to go back to Retro Pie. This time I hit button A for choosing it. And it's back to the last option we chose, Raspy Config. But now I want to go down and I want to show my IP address. So I'll highlight that, press the A button, fires off the program. And now I have an IP address. And my IP address is 192.168.0.31. And remember, my host name is Retro Pi. So I just press A for OK. Now we're going to go down and see what happens when we click on the Wi Fi button. So I highlight that, press A. And it says, Do you want to connect to the Wi Fi network? And if you notice, I guess that my IP address is up here. And sure enough, my current IP address. 192.168.0.31 is the one that said before. And if you notice right beside uh, the third option down, fourth row down, it says wireless ESSID, home underscore Wi-Fi. And that's the Wi-Fi that I selected and provided the password. So I highlight one, connect to the network. I have the OK button, I highlight it, and I'm just gonna press A. Now it says, please choose the network you would like to connect to. And I'm gonna choose Wi-Fi. By the way, I was already connected to home Wi-Fi. I'm just taking you through this so you see if you want to choose a different Wi-Fi. Say you took it over to a friend's house or something, this is how you would do it. But I connect, I'm just gonna reconnect to my home Wi-Fi. And I have OK down here selected. I'm pressing A. And it's gonna ask me for my password. So I'm using the keyboard. Typed it in, OK is highlighted, press A. It says it's connecting. And once again, I'm just looking at this information. That's the right IP address and the wireless ESSID of home underscore Wi-Fi. And I could disconnect or remove from here to some Wi-Fi credentialing or I could just exit. So I move with my D-pad over to the right to exit, press A, and I'm back to the attract mode submenu, and I press B, and I'm back to the attract uh, mode main menu. So that's how you set up Wi-Fi and attract mode. And remember, regardless if you're using attract mode or emulation station or the command line, you all three of those are gonna execute the program Raspi Config. To allow your uh, Raspberry Pi that's running RetroPi to be accessed by a remote computer th via the line command, we have to set the setting for SSH to be enabled. Enabled, And the way you do that is you have to go into Raspi Config. Now, just like we did the Wi-Fi, to get to Raspi Config, I'm in the Attract Mode main menu. I'm going to RetroPie, press A to select it, and I'm going through this menu to find Raspi Config, and I press A to select Raspi Config, and it's going to start up that main menu. So to, to turn on SSH, we're going to go to something called the interface options, which is item number five. So I'll highlight that, right right on the D-pad, select, press A, I'm sorry, press B. And here, the op there's a whole bunch of options here to turn on or, or enable or disable. We're gonna go to SSH, uh, enable the remote command line access to your Pi using SSH, highlight that. Right on the D-pad, select is highlighted, and then press B. Would you like this SSH server to be enabled? Yes. The SSH server is enabled. Okay. Then we're just going to go over to finish, press B, and we're back. And this, and for that setting, it didn't have to reboot. So we're back into attract mode. I'm going to press B. We're out of the RetroPie menu. 
And we're now back in the main menu of a track mode. We're in a track mode right now. I'm gonna show you how to get to the Raspberry config via emulation station. So I'm on the main menu, I'm just gonna select RetroPie. And then I'm gonna go up here and it says reboot to emulation station. I'm gonna select that. And at this point, the Raspberry Pi is going to reboot and then instead of bringing us into a track mode, it'll bring us into emulation station. Okay, we're back. I'm now on emulation station. And one of the things you'll notice is the menu now is over here on the right side. We're in a track mode. Our menu was in the left side. So it's just a visual for you on my videos to understand it when we're in a track mode or emulation station. So we want to get to Raspberry Config. So I'm using my D-pad to scroll up or scroll down, doesn't matter, but to scroll through the uh, menu here. And there's a retro pie right there, similar to what it was in a track mode. So I select that, press my A button, and I'll have a menu over here on the left. We're in a track mode. That menu was over here on the right. Um, we're going to come down here and we're searching for uh, Rasby Config. I passed it up. It's alphabetical order. There's Rasby Config. Press A. And there is Raspberry, Raspberry Config. This is the exact same thing we saw when we got to it in a track mode. It's the exact same program. And at this point, you'll do the same processes where you'll do your host name and you'll set up your uh, Wi-Fi SSID, your password. Uh, you can enable SSH. All that you do exactly the same as you, you know, as we described previously in the video. So at this point, we just right click, finish. Press B and it takes us back into emulation station. And when you're in emulation station, we have show IP address. So highlight that, press A. And there's our IP address again, we're done. So uh, OK is highlighted, we press B. Then we scroll down here. Here's Wi-Fi, I select A. It's taking us through the same process that we went through uh, with the track mode, because these are the exact same programs are being called by emula emulation station that were being called by a track mode. So don't get thrown off by you're doing this in a track mode or if you're doing this in the emulation station, they're both calling the same program. So, but that's how you can connect to your Wi-Fi network, or if you went to a friend's house or somewhere, you could switch uh, networks. So we'll just do exit, press B, and it takes us back into emulation station. And at this point, I would select this option if I want to reboot back into a track mode. We're in a track mode. There's my menu. I'm just scrolling through it. Now I'm going to hit the... Uh, Previously, I've demonstrated how to uh, get to Raspberry Config via the RetroPie menu option in a track mode or the Retro RetroPie menu option in Emulation Station. Now we're going to go to the line command. I'm just pressing the B button for back. It says, do you want to exit a track mode? I'm going to say yes. Choose yes. Press the A button. And now I'm in the line mode. And with my keyboard, I'm just typing raspy config press enter sorry okay so this comes back it says script must run as a root so i really need to use sudo raspy config and there we are we're back in the right there it says we're in the raspy config tool this is the exact same program that was called by track mode the exact same program that was called by emulation station one thing to note when you're in Raspi config from the line command, instead of from a track mode or emulation station, you don't have access to your gamepad. You have to use your keyboard to navigate around, which you're already using your keyboard because the line command, you had to type in sudo raspberry config.
In this section of the video, we're going to cover something that will, could prevent you from getting your Wi-Fi connected. And this uh, situation is not well documented out on the internet, but it does happen quite a bit. So it's talking about blocking and more importantly, soft blocks. So at the line command, I do sudo rf kill list all. You're going to see where my uh, physical, my wireless LAN has a soft block of yes and a hard block no. And the Bluetooth has a soft block of no and the hard block of no. Now this will prevent you from connecting to up to your uh, Raspberry Pi up to the Wi-Fi. So to remove that soft block, you will issue sudo rf kill kill uh, unblock all. And then we just do sudo rf kill list all. And now we see that those are all set to no. Now this will that that will now let you go set up Wi-Fi. If you if you're trying to set up Wi-Fi and it's not working for you, you need to come in here and verify that you got no soft blocks going on. In this section, we're going to cover one more area that I've come across when dealing with uh, setting up Wi-Fi on Raspberry Pi is uh, the localization that we set earlier, where we set the country equals to US. For some reason, that doesn't get saved in the uh, configuration file. And the configuration file is called WPA underscore supplicant that C-O-N-F. And that file is located in the folder slash ETC slash WPA underscore supplicant. So I'm in, I'm doing PWD. Once again, these command line commands, I'll have a, another video come out shortly that, uh, you know, review all these. I'll give you a primer on line commands that you'll need to do this kind of stuff. But I'm in the slash home slash pi folder. So I'm just going to go back one, go back another one. I'm going to go forward to ETC. I'm going to go forward to uh, WPA, WPA supplicant. Okay, just do an LS for list. And sure enough, there's this white file, WPA underscore supplicant dot CLNF. So I'm going to edit sudo nano. We'll bring up my editor, file. Can't.clf. Okay, in this file, I can see the third line down says country equals US. Now, sometimes that's not saved and you have to create this. You have to manually go in here and, and add that row. Uh, it's not very often, it's really rare, but just in case, it took me a long time to figure that out. Other things that are interesting you find out here is you see there's my SSID for uh, my home network and there's the password, pass key that I use, Cowboys. So uh, that's kind of neat. By the way, I will change this after this video so you alter hackers can't come in. But I want to leave it there so you at least see what the, because uh, you could, when you type in your pass key, you may mistype it and you're like, I don't know what I typed in. You can come to this file, and figure out what you typed in. All right, so let's control exit, clear screen. In the previous demos, we started in a track mode. We were in the Wolf on the Oz 32 gigabyte image. This image is the Mr. Burns 801 image. And the, the difference here is here, here you are in the attract mode menu. There's no way to get to uh, retro Pi. So in order to do that for this specific image, the Mr. Burns, we actually have to back out of attract mode and uh, I hit B to go here, and then we go to a yes and select A, and we go to the command line. Now at the command line, we have uh, uh, two options here. We can go right into raspy config, or we can go into emulation station. So I'm gonna go into emulation station, and I realize it's a little difficult to see because it's at an angle. But if you watched earlier in the video, this should make some sense to you. So an emulation station, I have an option here for uh, arcade and for retro pie. So uh, we'll just click on, and this is just like, so this is emulation station, just like the uh, Wolf and Oz image. So we're gonna choose the retro pie. 
and that's option A. And then here's the menu for, and I, I could twist this a little bit, make it a little easier for you guys. But so there's a track mode. And if we scroll down here, there's show IP address and there's Wi-Fi options, just like in uh, the Wolf and Eyes image that we were looking at earlier. It's just displayed a little bit differently. And if I choose Wi-Fi, now I've already gone in and set this up. So if I show IP here, uh, it comes back and there's our IP address right there. 192.168.031. And I, choose, I click A to OK to go back. Uh, if I wanted to, there's Raspberry Config. I press A to choose Raspberry Config. And there's that standard menu, uh, selected finish, clicked on the B button, takes us back. And there's Wi-Fi, I'll press the A button. Wi-Fi was at the bottom here, you probably couldn't see it. Uh, and it takes us in here. And if, and if I, I'm in option one, connect to Wi-Fi network, if I press the uh, A button, It brings up the list of all the different um, Wi-Fi's in my area. In this case, I'm going to use the Wi-Fi one. And I just click OK. Ask me for my passphrase. I have my keyboard handy. I type it in. And it's connecting me to my Wi-Fi. And all this is exactly how you did it either from the command line, the, uh, um, the line command raspberry config or through emulation station from uh, when you executed it uh, in the Wolf and Oz. So this is all the same. You're executing the same programs. Uh, don't get caught up in, well, this, res, uh, this emulation station looks different on Mr. Burns than it does on the Wolf and Oz. These options, they're still the same. Uh, let me move that camera. So there you can see there's the Wi-Fi. So the only thing that's different is in the Wolf and Eyes, he lets you go into this RetroPie menu from a track mode. And then Mr. Burns, you can't go to this RetroPie menu uh, in a track mode. You have to dump down either to go back into emulation station manually or execute the Raspberry config yourself. But eventually you'll have to get into RetroPie from emulation station because you'll get access to the Wi-Fi there. So it's just something a little different between Mr. Burns and image and the Wolf and Oz image at the attract mode point. All right, we've got a Raspberry Pi hooked up to our Wi-Fi. Now I'm going, that has access to my Wi-Fi and it can get out to the internet, the global internet. And that means any device I have on my Wi-Fi will have access to it. So we're gonna demonstrate that in this portion of the video. I'm going to go to my folder that has uh, all the software uh, related to my Raspberry Pi and RetroPi projects. And I'm going to go to my PuTTY software. And the PuTTY is a line command. It's going to let me connect to the line command on uh, our command line on my RetroPi, my Raspberry Pi. So here I can either type the host name, RetroPi, or I can type the IP address that we wrote down when we were doing all that in earlier in the video 0 0.31 and I'm in SSH that's why we enabled SSH so we can do line command sharing and I'm just going to do open so at this point it's asking me to log in and the ID the default ID is always pi pi and the password is raspberry. These are all lowercase, case sensitive. R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. And I press enter. And there, it says I've logged in. So I've logged in to the Raspberry Pi that had that IP address. And I can issue com line commands. Once again, I'll have a separate video on these. That's uh, my current directory is a home Pi. So I can, I can go backwards. I can do a list of which files are in there. Only one. We can go forward to the list. So there's RetroPie. Go forward. 
So I'm executing all these commands across my wireless network onto my Raspberry Pi. And uh, it's kind of cool. So I'm, I have remote control of it. All right, so that's the line command. I can also come in here and execute WinSCP. It's a graphical user interface. Uh, I don't want to upgrade. So it comes in here and it says, uh, let's log in. This time, I'm instead of doing the IP address, I'll do the host name, Retro Pi. And I'm going to give it my user ID, Pi, password, Raspberry. And then we're going to log in. And here I go. This is my laptop C drive, and this is my Raspberry Pi, home Pi. And I have access to all this. So if I go backwards, instead of doing a CD colon colon, I can just graphically do a colon. Now I'm in Pi. If I go backwards again. Here's all my root folders. Look, there's ETC. And then in the East ETC, there's the WPA supplicant folder. It's where we look for the country equals US. And sure enough, there's our WPA supplicant.conf file to look at the, the country equals US. All right. So the nice thing about this is you can use this if you make changes somewhere along the way. You can use this to back up files from your Raspberry Pi over to a folder on your laptop. Or if you make changes to a file on your laptop, you can copy them over to your Raspberry Pi in a graphical user interface. It's very nice if you want to add more ROMs and game ROMs to your system or configuration files if you want to add configuration files or if you want to back up configuration files you can move them over here. So the WinSCP is a nice graphical tool. Uh, one other way you could look at that I'm just going to right click open up a new explorer and then here I'm just going to go back retro pi press enter and now I have access to my RetroPi. So it's it's a device out on my network and its host name is RetroPi, so it recognizes it. Uh, the, the limiting thing here is uh, you can't see all the hidden file or hidden folders in that. So I would use WinSCP if I was giving you my advice and if you were taking my advice, but that's up to you. So anyway, that concludes this section. I just want to show you now that you set up the Wi-Fi. Not only does your Raspberry Pi is connected to your Wi-Fi and has access to all kinds of stuff out on the uh, global internet, but you also have access to your Raspberry Pi, your Retro Pi that's on your Wi-Fi with other PCs that are on your Wi-Fi network and you can do remote control and you can share files. So all right, that wraps up this RetroPie video, providing a tutorial on how to set up Wi-Fi and SSH on your Raspberry Pi that's running RetroPie in the track mode. Hopefully I exposed you to something new in this video. Be sure to keep watching my YouTube channel to catch my upcoming videos on my retro game systems featuring the RetroPie software running on a Raspberry Pi. I think you'll find them very entertaining, interesting, and even educational. Future videos in this series will show you how to perform more detailed and technical configuration settings within RetroPie and Emulation Station and the Track Mode to customize those software for your preferences. Click on the red subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell for automatic updates when I add new content to my YouTube channel. If you like this video, then click on the thumbs up button. If you dislike this video, then click on the thumbs down button. Please leave any feedback you have in the comment section. And remember, you're never too young to learn or too old to learn.